I love battle packs. I love them so much, in fact, that I'm going to be doing an entire series taking a look at every single LEGO Star Wars battle pack that has ever been released in chronological order according to release. Which brings me to the very first or second one, depending on your definition. Now, technically, this is set number 7655, and the droids battle pack of the same year was 7654, but they released on the same day, and I think in general, I'll be starting off with the good guys battle pack of the wave or the gear when that's applicable. That brings us today to the classic clone troopers battle pack. Now, like I mentioned, this was set number 7655, and it's a rather small one by modern standards. It only contains 58 pieces, and you can kind of see where they all are. It's not substantial, but certainly not out of line with what we would see in future battle pack builds. This was revolutionary at the time, including four figures in a $10 set. $10 in 2007 money is a little bit more now. That would be about $13.89 ish. So we'll round up and say $14. No, in fact, $20 is not nearly spot on with inflation, even though Lego would probably like you to think that. This one was $10 when it was released, which was kind of a crazy idea to put four sought after minifigures in a set like that. But let's stop beating around the bush and take a look at these figures. Our first figure is a 327th Star Corps clone trooper. And this is actually the only set he ever appeared in. He has these sort of yellow to maybe light orange markings. He's got a stripe kind of running up from his chest up to his helmet and a little bit of orange even on his belt there. He has the implication of one of these kind of uh, uh, these kind of shoulder guards, uh, although there's no physical piece associated with it. I don't even think this old helmet would have allowed for that, but really nice figure uh, at any rate. And like all the other ones, he is just going to have a black head because they kind of had to with the helmet. You can see it's uh, the visor is completely see through, so they could have done a black head with a face on the back. But even when they did that, that never really worked too well so along the same lines we have our shock trooper and this was also an exclusive figure to this set a slightly different shock trooper would release a couple years later uh in the air well actually probably only one year later in the atap walker as you can see his whole deal is red markings and they are pretty accurately represented from what we see in revenge of the sith as at least to my knowledge i think they've pretty much stuck with the same pattern on all the prints even if of course, the helmet has gone through some redesigns. So that's another little excellent trooper there with some really nice red markings to set him apart. I've always liked the look of that one. These guys sure are nostalgic, aren't they? I mean, if you look at the helmet, it really doesn't look a whole lot like what we see in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, if anything, it just kind of looks a little derpy. I've always kind of thought these guys looked sad, you know, just like just like they were kind of bummed, perpetually bummed out. I mean, even with that, this design for me was so cool as a kid. I always wanted these guys. This battle pack came out the year before I started really getting into Lego Star Wars, so I never had one of these. I mean, I think the print, prints are simple, but they, they get the, the point across. Of course, this was before leg printing on clone troopers um, by, a, by a good bit. So yeah, I mean, simple, simple gray lines representing most of the details, but I think it gets the point across. And even though the helmet may not be accurate, I, I can't just explain how nostalgic it is. I think the newer design obviously blows it out of the water. But for the time, these were pretty good clone troopers, I think. And uh, we get two regular clone troopers in this set. Um, the other one has a pair of binoculars. Uh, that's the only thing distinguishing about him, though. So now let's take a look at the battle pack builds that we have provided here. And this really became kind of a template for several later battle packs we would see, even including this one right here, the 2019 Mandalorian battle pack. Um, we just have a speeder and a little... Uh, a little defense turret, a little piece of cover there for one of our clone troopers. Uh, just something for him to stand behind and shoot. But let's take a look at the speeder first, being the more significant of the two builds. And I think the one that most people would 
really want to get out of this set. It is a quite rudimentary design. You can see the bulk of the body of the speeder is really just one long plate uh, with some uh, two pieces uh, for landing gear. It's, you know, it's, it's quite simple. It's probably something a lot of us uh, could have designed ourselves, but it gets the point across. And I think what is great about this speeder is the fact that you can actually see two clone troopers on it. On the official art for this set, it shows our 327th trooper sitting in the front seat like so, and it actually shows a regular clone trooper with his blaster mounted and him uh, manning it kind of almost like the bark speeder with sidecar that we would later see in the Clone Wars TV show. And I think I actually have to put him on first. So that is one thing about this design. It is definitely cramped. Um, you can see things popping off. It's not really the strongest build. This was 2007. The emphasis wasn't really there on making everything super strong. If it was connected, it was connected as far as things went with them. But uh, they've obviously improved like the, uh, on that a lot over the years. But as you can see, they fit. There is even a small gap in between their helmets. So they're not totally smushed up against each other. But he can be kind of the tail gunner while this 327th Trooper steers this speeder around. And we have, uh, I think, what are two blasters in the front represented by this classic piece right here. I know I use those for blasters in my mocks all the time when I was trying to make Star Wars ships. Uh, we also have a couple of head uh, megaphone pieces. Uh, on the sides with some cones on them to represent uh, some more blasters on the side. And we've got some, you know, gnarly looking engine intake pieces all over this thing. Uh, especially these ones on the back might be engines. And I think this thing is, is somewhat inspired by the Bark Speeder, but obviously it's not. It doesn't look like that, but it is its own thing. And I think for what it is, it totally works, even if it looks kind of rudimentary. Our other build in the set is this little teeny uh, piece of cover for our clone trooper, a little gunner's station. And this one similarly is quite simple, just bricks and plates pretty much. Uh, it's just got this little cone for a blaster piece. And so you can, as it shows on the box, put the, uh, the long rifle in there and we can take, well, we're just going to take our shock trooper here and we will place him on the back stud right there to kind of look like he is manning this little gunner's post, which um, if you turn it around this way and look at, you know, it looks pretty nice. One thing that can't be helped here with this design is that it just looks like the gun is always going to be at an inclination. That's just because of the angle on the blaster itself and the way that it's mounted. You can't move it up or down, so it just kind of looks like he's shooting up all the time, which is a bit of a shortcoming. You'd have to, to display it, really, you'd have to have an enemy slightly above him to shoot at. It's a minor gripe. When you take into consideration everything you get here, I think this was a really classic and amazing set, especially for only $10. Of course, these builds have not aged super well. Like, I wouldn't really want to be putting these in a mock anymore. I know people don't really even like putting Lego official vehicles in their mocks anyways, and this one is not the most crazy looking design there, at least in a positive sense. But I mean, for the time, the imaginative play that this gives you, this was also before flick fire missiles, just before, so we don't get any of those. Uh, those probably would have torn the speeder apart trying to fire a flick fire missile, honestly. So that's fine, but I think the imaginative play that this set gives you, especially if you combo it with the droids battle pack that we'll be talking about next week uh you can really have a little mini battle just for 20 dollars with uh, 11 figs which is pretty much outstanding i mean of course there's inflation but nowadays 20 dollars is what you get for four figures so uh, you know it, it can't it, it can't really be possible to look at this without uh some kind of rose colored glasses and i think the other thing that's really great about this set is the variety of clone troopers that you get the two regular troopers two other you know kind of specialty troopers that are also massable characters you could build your 327th legion as well as your uh shock troopers which you know there's tons of in universe so uh the figure selection is absolutely perfect and i think lego would really do well to release a remake of this battle pack perhaps for the anniversary of episode 3 in 2025 i'm just saying they've done remakes of battle packs before i would certainly welcome it with this one just a variety of troopers 
that you get plus the two fun builds this is a really amazing lego set and i honestly think a must have for anyone who enjoys lego star wars thank you for watching we will be coming back at you next week in this series for the droids battle pack of the same year i will have other videos coming out in between thank you so much for watching